Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is all about Filet Crochet. Now the thumbnail and the video description has something that is a Filet Crochet project. What I'm going to be doing today is talking about how to execute a Filet uh, Crochet concept but I'm going to be using two generic patterns to be able to educate you on what you're looking for and how to follow it through. So I'm going to be taking you through a demonstration of doing filet crochet but from a generic point of view today. Hey if you haven't figured me out yet just to let you know that my theory in life is that you teach somebody to fish they can eat for a lifetime versus giving you a fish and you can only eat that fish for that one time. My goal here on the channel is to make sure that you can actually learn exactly what is involved in behind these particular filet crochet things so that you can find other patterns and apply the knowledge that I'm sharing with you so that you can do that. So that's the whole point of this. I know some of you may complain that you wish I would have like filmed this sample or this sample or this sample. The concepts that I'm sharing on the channel are all going to align with each other so they should all work together. So just let you know, teaching you to fish. So from my perspective I can film filet crochet until the cows come home. I don't have cows so they're never coming home. <laughs> so what I have here is that filet crochet is a matter of about putting shapes into your project. Sometimes in this particular one where the boxes are left empty to form the shape of the design of the dinosaur. This one here there is a bunny that is worked into this particular blanket and the fact is is that this particular uh, bunny is facing two different directions and it's also a different count of repeat. So what's similar between them? It's just the number of holes that are used in order to create the shape. So where the holes land is where the shape is being created. So in order to execute something like that even from uh, patterns in the past you need to follow a graph in order to do it. Here on video tutor uh, a tutorial format there can be up to like 50 rows of instruction but the fact is is that if you just go to the graph you can follow it step by step a lot easier than following somebody like me on camera. So let me show you some graph work and then we'll continue to talk from that point. So here are two different types of graphs but they're exactly the same execution. Everything in filet crochet is considered a mesh. So sometimes the mesh that is being left is the holes are what is creating the dinosaur shape here. So this allows you to have more finer detail for the shaping of this triceratops. Here the mesh is actually left open all the way around the bunny and the bunny is then solid. So it's one of those ones where it, it can go either way. There's no difference in the explanation of how this is done. So in actual fact it's actually faster to do something like this where it has more open mesh than it would be to have something that's more solid. So how do you get this exactly and what is the actual representation of the, the X and Y? Let's talk about that. So on the pattern that you're following you have to look for the definition of what one of these boxes are. So in this particular triceratops what's happening in the box is that do you see that there's a different color box here than the others? That's because there's a different um, instruction for that box compared to all the other gray boxes and then the white box. So what this is is according to the pattern every box equals two stitches. So it's a really neat way to do it. So you're not just looking at one stitch in this particular example you're looking at two per box. And so that's how we're going to be executing this as we go. So what do those boxes mean in this particular example? We have to go to the pattern to be able to find that out. So let's do that. Psst. Hey so I gotta put this in. Just because I'm sharing the box counts for this particular example just remember that the designer is going to tell you what those boxes are. There are some filet crochet where they have like two, three, four stitches per box. You have to look at the pattern in order to do that. So just keep an eye on that. So back to this regular scheduled program. <laughs> So you may not be comfortable with reading patterns but don't sweat the small stuff. We can actually try to get this, get through this. And what you want to do is that you want to look to where this information is here on the pattern itself. So I just did a big screenshot of this. So we have the black box here is the beginning block, the gray box is the block and the white block is the mesh. Okay so where are you gonna get that information? So what we have to do is we have to find the information of what those boxes mean. So let's take a look and figure out where that is. So in reading through the pattern you could just quickly look and see what comes out to your mind. So you're looking for beginning block, mesh block and block. 
So we're just reading along. I've already kind of read it ahead so I'm not kind of re reading it to find it. What it is, it's right here. So it says beginning block. So it says beginning block made. That means that there's instruction just before this that tells us what this is. So it says chain three, one double crochet in the next double crochet hyphen beginning block made. So what this is right here, it's chain three, and a double crochet is the beginning block. So when there's a black box in the sample, that's what that is. Okay? Then what is the next one? So we have one double crochet in the next stitch and then chain one, skip the next stitch and there's another hyphen It says mesh made. So now we know that the mesh is made up of one double crochet and a chain one and we're gonna skip one. Okay, so that's fine. So now the final one, the block, which is the gray block, what does that mean? So in the same information it says one double crochet in each of the next two stitches hyphen block made. So this means that one grayed out box equals two double crochets that will be side by side. So now we know the definition of these. So when you're going through your particular pattern that you're looking at, you have to figure out what those blocks mean. Sometimes it's laid out really quite nicely like this. Sometimes it could be instructions with the graph itself and telling you what it is, uh, but that's what we know. So now we understand that each block is now made up of two stitches. So back to the graph we go, we cannot tell by this if this is uh, what side is the right side and what side is the wrong side. So right side if you know is the side that you're gonna see when somebody's looking at this and you want them to see it, that's the right side and the wrong side is the underside. It's the side that you don't want people to see. Now in this particular example, if you turned over the Trisar Tops blanket, you will not really be able to know the difference. But if you had something where it matters like a name or something, you want to make sure that you keep an eye on your right side and the wrong side uh, generally speaking. However, during execution you still need to pay attention to your right side and the wrong side and the best way to do that is try to figure out exactly what is the right side and the wrong side. So we can, we're gonna be able to go back to here and figure it oh, there's right and left, right and left, right side, wrong side. So let's take a look at this instruction and let's tell us what that means. So we look at this instruction and we can see first row right side. RS is right side and we can tell that abbreviation by the stitch key. So we know now that when we start the uh, the first row, we're going to be on the right side. What I would plan on if I were you and you were me, write the number or write the letters R side on this side of the graph and therefore you'll know that whenever you're going in this direction to read it for the shaping that you need, you're gonna be on the right side of it. And I would write automatically on the other side WS for wrong side. So now you'll be able to figure out if this is right side or wrong side when you're looking at it. The other thing that you could do is to help you as well is that you can get a sticky note and just put it up over top of the pattern and as you're following it just move the sticky note up so that you just can visually see the instruction that you need to see and to be able to follow it through in order to have it make any sense. So what does this mean for the actual sample itself? Because it's going to matter what side that you're looking at and it's sometimes very difficult to tell. So let me show you a tip for that. So I did a little sample here and on my very first row, I decided to put in a stitch marker that is only on the right side. So when it's turned over, this is the wrong side and when this is back over to the right side there. So if this is the right side and I'm going in this direction, it means that I should be looking at the instructions from the right side going across. If right now I'm at the end of the right side and I turn it over, do you see that it's the right side is underneath? So I'm looking at the wrong side. So I'm gonna have to pick out from this side and follow the instruction this way. So you're still just snaking your way up this graph back and forth, back and forth in order to be able to have it make sense. So that's an easy way to, for you to tell if you're on the right side or wrong side by just taking a few seconds right at the very beginning, put a stitch marker in and be able to determine that. So what else is going on with this particular blanket? You know that this Triceratops is not just one time in the blanket, it's several. Let's figure out that. So the Triceratops actually appears four times. But you notice that when you're going across you'll have one triceratops and then another. So we know that it's only being repeated a total of one time after it's done the first time. So it's only twice. So in the graph here 
and what you may wanna do is print out two of these and just cut the graph out and put tape to it. The repeat as it's stating is in the red line here. It's 34 blocks of a repeat. So it's from here to here. Okay, just right there. And so you're only doing the beginning block here at the start of it and once you get to here you're just going to pick your eyes up and go back to here and follow it across if you're doing the right side. If you're going in the opposite direction you will follow this instruction with the beginning block, go across and you'll stop at the red line and then for the next triceratops you'll pick up at this line here and then go again and then do this uh, to the very end. So it's only being repeated twice. The bunny rabbit, like I showed you in the beginning, is a little bit of a different monster. If Well, not really but it is. So let me show you that. So here the bunny rabbit has two different directions. So there's more rows in the height in order to get that to go through. But the repeating is just how you saw it. So you will have your right side and I looked ahead and I noted that the right side is on row number one. The wrong side is on the other side. I know that. So what happens here is that I'm going to start up and I'm gonna go across on row number one and once I get to the red line I pick back up at the red line here and keep on going until I get the number of repeats that it's asking me to do. Okay, so you'll do that right to the end. When you're ready to turn your project around the opposite direction from the wrong side starting on row number two you're just gonna go across and then you stop at the red line and then pick up at the start of the new red line here and then keep on going and do the number of repeats across. So that's your easy way to be able to tell it but there's a lot more in the height in order to worry about the, the bunny going in different directions. Also with the bunny let's take a look at what those boxes mean because they can be quite different as well. So not all patterns are done equally as you can see here. So it says the beginning block, the block and the mesh. So what we have is the three like we had it before. The difference this time is that it's telling me exactly what that instruction is. So even though I can find it in the pattern over here, it's actually got it here in the stitch key so it will save me a bit of time. So the beginning block is a chain three. I like crochet uh, symbols. So it's a chain three and a, and a double crochet and then a block equals one double crochet in each of the next two. So there's two double crochets in a row. And then finally the mesh is one double crochet chain one and you're going to skip the one stitch. So nice and simple and you can just follow that along as you want to do it. So that's kind of neat and it's actually not a hard concept. So I wanna take you to an actual physical sample and I wanna show you the difference of, of these three different blocks that is indicated. You should also know just one last thing before I blow your mind is that these boxes are not always equal the same. Sometimes a designer can have four stitches in a block. So it could be three, it uh, could just be one. So just keep an eye on that and make sure that you follow what the designer is asking you. So you can still follow the diagram just know a little bit of basic information and you can skip a lot of the words that are, are there. So let's take a look at a physical sample. So you may not be comfortable with reading patterns but there is certain information that is really quite helpful. Chain CH equals chain. Chain 149 to get this particular sample. So I wouldn't worry about trying to figure out different multiples if this is your first time. Just go with it and chain 149. Once you get this done you can move to the first row which is next and then therefore you can go to your diagram and just follow your diagram and do your repeats to get all your bunnies in a row pretty much. So let's add try a little sample and let's begin. So let's do a mini sample together. Let's just chain 15 for the fun of it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. So once you get that done I want you to go fourth chain from the hook. So just put me on pause now and uh, I'll start a little sample. So get 15 done if you haven't done it and I'll be right back. Let's just do our first row and it says in the first row to double crochet in every stitch all the way across. Nice and simple right? So we're going to go four chain from the hook. So one, two, three and four and turn it over. Get the back hump and I want you to double crochet in each chain or back hump all the way across. So please do that and then maybe at the end of the row in just a moment. So I'm just coming all the way across and I just wanna do a little bit of the, bu of the bunny. We're not doing the whole thing. I just wanna just show you some stitch work. 
So I'm gonna come all the way across and let's just say that we just did row number one and we're gonna turn and work and we're gonna look at row number two. So row number two has us starting on this side because we just come across. Let me zoom in and just show so you. So row number two has us doing a beginning block and we now know that a beginning block equals chain three and a double crochet to equal that block. We know that this is the white block is a mesh so that's a double crochet chain one and skip one. And we know that the next uh, gray block here is two double crochets in a row. So we know what those three mean and all we just need to do is just follow the sequence going all the way across. So let's try it on our sample. So we know that it's a beginning block to start us. So we're gonna chain three and we're gonna double crochet into the very next stitch. It then has us doing the next one which is a mesh. Everything is working in sets of two. So just remember that. So the mesh stitch is going to be one double crochet in the next stitch, chain one, skip the next stitch and that's the mesh. Back to the pattern it says a gray box and so after we have to automatically skip one because we've just finished this mesh stitch. So the next two in a row will each be a double crochet and that's the gray box being filled in. So back here we know that there's a white box next. So that means that the next stitch has to be a double crochet, chain one, skip one and then back to it we see another gray box and so after you skip the one there will be two double crochets in a row. And you just have to follow it just like that in order to make it work. Okay, so you're gonna go all the way across with that particular formulation in order to to make that happen. Okay, so what I want to point out to you on your first one, I didn't do it which I'm regretting I didn't but what you should do just grab a spare piece of yarn and on your very first one when you're looking at it from your perspective see this here. The very first row it should be on this side of the work. So this means that this is your right side when you go to look at it. So put in a stitch marker there so that I'll be able to follow that diagram a lot more easier. So I know which is which. Okay, so I'm currently on the wrong side which is number two. So you're just gonna fill in your information to what you already know on your box work and then once you get to the end of it I'm just gonna fill in these stitches just to finish it. But uh, that's not what it is in the pattern but that's what I'm doing. Remember in your mesh work as well this turning chain is a stitch. People tend to forget that and then they start eliminating stitches and don't know why. So just look at it from that point of view. See that? So when you go to turn it you're gonna be back on the right side and you can tell that now by the stitch marker that I just placed in. So you can go to your next instruction and again if you want to get like a, a, a sticky note or something you can just stick it here and then just move it up so that you can only see the stitch work that you're working in in the time. Once you get to the bunny here the bunny will help make sense of what this pattern actually is, is looking like when you, when you get there. And so it's just a matter of following it along but in order to get the orientation you're gonna have to excessively count right in the beginning so that you can see where this is going to show up. And then once you can see the bunny start to materialize it gets a lot easier to do uh, filet crochet and it requires you to have patience as well. That's certainly something that is uh, probably the most noted thing of filet crochet. So while the video title and the picture had something different than what you're seeing here, the fact is is that you have that information and really it's one of those ones where a tutorial for every particular mesh a design that is possible is just not uh, it's just not suitable. Because the fact is is that you have enough information that you can uh, uh, simply go through it and, you, and if you don't have the patience for it it's one of those ones that may be a concept that you're not going to want to try. There's other kinds of uh, filet crochet that is a lot easier as well. Not necessarily shaping but it could be geometric designs and so the, these are a little bit more complex in order to do it because you have to really kind of count your boxes uh, in order to do that. But once you start working through the concept you can know that you can you know uh, manage to make this happen. One thing that I will leave a note with you if you're looking at patterns in the past sometimes they had it like this. If that makes your eyes spin you can turn to social media and like put a complaint out that you don't like it. 
but what you can do because it'll save you a lot more time get your pencil crayons or your crayons out and just color in the boxes just to make it easier to read but originally uh, play crochet was probably more likely in this concept versus the way that it's being presented here. So things in time evolve with technology and that's one of those things. So hopefully this will get you started. If there's any kind of borders that are applied you can simply go back to the diagram or go back to the instruction and you can see in this particular one here with the triceratops what does this say? It says the edging is only one round and work one uh, round of single crochet evenly and the corner should have three single crochets in the corner. So it's nice and simple. Usually with this kind of concept is that the borders are usually quite simple because most of the attention to the detail is actually in the blanket itself and so if the border is over complicated then it just kind of gets all just a jumbled mess and you can kind of see the sample that it looks like that too. So it's a really neat idea and hopefully you can enjoy some filet crochet and uh, filet until the cows come home and if you don't have any you can filet and filet and filet. Have a great day and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.